In 2024, the WWE is in the midst of a renaissance era, with a hot product that hasn't been this good or popular since the early 2000s. For this video, we want to highlight how and why this is, from the groundwork that was laid in the years prior, to the changes of leadership and the acquisition of top talent, and most of all, the complete 180 fans have witnessed when it comes to creative and overall presentation. A lot of people have called this, oh, the Attitude Era is back. What I have called this era is the, excuse my language, the that era. Today, we'll explain why WWE feels so much better today. The seeds for this new era were planted prior to 2022. The critically acclaimed Bloodline storyline was better than anything the WWE had produced in probably a decade. The way this story was told differed greatly from how the company presented their stories for a long time. In 2024, it continues to grip audiences, as we can't wait to see what happens next. No. The arrival of Nick Khan would prove vital in altering the landscape of the company. He played a huge role in negotiating TV rights deals, as well as bringing the product to Peacock and overseeing the sale to Endeavor. Under his leadership as WWE president, the organization has made waves to change its culture and repair the reputation damaged by the previous regime. Cody Rhodes' return at WrestleMania 38 was one of the most important moments that laid the foundations for the next era. His presentation was unchanged from his time in AEW. His promos weren't like anything in WWE at the time. Yes, I cannot fit physically put that title belt into my father's hands. I cannot bestow it upon the American dream Dusty Rhodes, but I certainly can put it around the waist of the American nightmare. Rhodes' performance with a torn peck at Hell in a Cell 2022 was unprecedented. In what could have been the lowest point in my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought. Cody was going to be that true top babyface the company had been looking for since John Cena. I have to finish the story. Vince McMahon's retirement in July 2022 gave WWE a lift that it needed for quite some time. It provided a long overdue creative and talent morale boost, something that can be observed from one of the first major shows without Vince, Clash at the Castle. This was a historic, legendary event that set the tone for what was to come. It also cemented those who would be key players under the new regime. The Triple H project, so to speak. The Clash kicked off the slew of major international shows that would soon dominate the yearly pay-per-view calendar. Multiple annual overseas events at this scale was completely unprecedented in WWE. Coming out of Clash at the Castle, the stories being told and overall quality within Raw, SmackDown, and Pay-Per-View continued to improve. Just as they had been doing since Triple H first took over, wrestlers who were previously fired or had left were brought back much to the delight of the people. This past year in my life, I've, I, I lost a lot of things. I lost my career. I lost my self-confidence. I lost two people who were very, very close to me. I lost my way. I thought that everything that I'd ever done here or otherwise, I thought it was all meaningless. Nothing I ever did has mattered to anyone. I was wrong. On top of this, fans would now be rewarded for following the story and paying attention. We'd see seemingly minor things happening in segments that would have bigger implications later. Something that has remained to this day. Come on, boy! Get up, boy! See the the Vince McMahon's return as the chairman in early 2023 was a setback. The usual post-WrestleMania creative lull coincided with his return to power, but fans remained hopeful after Endeavor's purchase, especially since Nick Khan was promoted back to being president of the company. There was more hope when WWE's parent company, TKO, announced that The Rock had become a member of the board of directors. It was just days after Rock joined the board that news would emerge which ousted Vince once and for all. Watching Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-views now, you can tell how much freedom, talent, are now afforded under Triple H. Where are you? I'm here, come find me. Dude, you don't get, I'm not gonna beat you up. I'm oh, gonna oh, f you up, bro. Where the oh, f are you? And with that comes a level of confidence and quality of work that is evident when watching. Could we see it? Now Cody's going for it. Oh! oh. 
there's plenty of performers that have been given a new lease of life under Triple H. And we're going to highlight some of those who have excelled the most, starting with LA Knight, a man who under Vince had been stripped of his persona and relegated to a manager role while on the cusp of being fired. Under the game, Knight was allowed to be himself again, and this time on a big platform. And given his qualities, it was only a matter of time before the megastar got over with the WWE audience. Let me talk to you. LA Knight's everywhere, huh? You set one foot outside that ring, I'll hit you so hard, I'll knock that hair back to gray. Because while you failed over and over again, while you were busy doing suffering succotash, you're the head of the table, right? You're the tribal chief, right? You're a defending champion, right? No, no. I knew Will Smith was in the game, but I didn't know Uncle Phil became a rapper. He says, who hotter than top dollar? A lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see you got your little $5 haircut here. You're ready to take your school pictures. I just get the feeling you're not allowed within 50 yards of a school, you creep. Just, uh, just want to punch them first. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Right? You can answer. Right? Right? You don't want to answer? Okay, yeah. You London, tell them whose game this is. <laughs> tell them whose game this is. <laughs> yeah. We everybody saying. <laughs> yeah. Everybody saying. L A N. Twenty twenty three was the year Jey Uso finally broke off on his own. After putting in tremendous work as part of the bloodline, Jay joined Monday Night Raw to much fanfare. And I'm out too. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Acknowledge me! Oh! Do you believe in miracles? Cover my Jay! Over the next months, he would become one of the brand's top baby faces, aided by an immense cool factor, a breathtaking entrance, and a very popular catchphrase. Because it's just me, Oos, and main event, Jay Uso is now in your city! Yeah! yeah. yeah. In recent years, Bailey had established herself as a great heel, but when cracks began to form in her damage control faction, fans knew it wouldn't be long until she would be that brilliant babyface the people got behind in NXT. It was all going to come down to the booking, and thankfully, her split from damage control was handled very well. A spectacular Royal Rumble victory led to a very good breakup angle. Bailey's going to WrestleMania! What happened? Oh my god! The final dagger, courtesy of Dakota Kai. That all built to Bailey getting a WrestleMania moment by becoming women's champion again. Bailey did it! I'm on a WrestleMania with The Rock, John Cena, The Undertaker. Trish Stratus is waiting to give me a hug after winning a championship. Sounds like a movie and it sounds like dreams. Since Triple H's takeover, few wrestlers in WWE have been hotter than Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. We can't talk about one without the other, given their fantastic story arc together. Rhea's presence was the motivation Dominic needed to turn on his father. He went from a white meat babyface to a despised, ungrateful heel that turned his back on family to align with the Judgment Day. Rise with the Judgment Day or continue to fall alongside your father. It was this version of the faction that made it a highlight of TV every week. Mainly so we could see what Dom and Rhea were going to get up to, but also to see how the brilliant feud with the Mysterios developed. I'm not your baby boy anymore. I'm a man. And I made him into a man. Mom? Shut up! Don't do this, Ray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mommy's always right. Exactly. Mommy's always right. 
just like mommy's always on top. It could be my dumb dumb. <laughs> While Dominic became one of the best heels on the show. Like I was saying. I decided not to show aggression towards my dad. I can't. I always thought they were pumping in that noise. I didn't realize how loud it actually was when you were out here. Ripley was the dominant top star of the women's division. Liv Morgan's addition to the story just added further layers. She'd previously been injured by Rhea. <laughs> so what better way to get revenge on mommy than to put her on the shelf and try to seal her boyfriend on top of that. Liv, Liv Morgan! Liv Morgan! It was the type of storytelling fans had been crying out for in the years prior. I don't think that a gorgeous man like you should be with a girl that makes you call her mommy. You love that text I sent you, right? Let me get this for you. <laughs> Gunther's dominance under Triple H brought prestige back to the Intercontinental Championship. The Ring General became the type of heel we weren't used to seeing in WWE. His record-breaking IC title reign showcased the type of wrestling that blends sport and storytelling aspects together perfectly. I want to share some words about all the legends that held this great title before. You contributed absolutely nothing. Fans couldn't help getting emotionally invested in Chad Gable and Sami Zayn's chase for the belt. You can't beat Gunther. Why are you? I am afraid, okay? Is that what you want to hear? I'm afraid of letting people down. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Sammy Zayn! Not to mention the subsequent feud between the two that came from their desire to be champion. Trust me. The only tears you ever want to wipe off your child's face are tears of joy. Crawl it toward the cover! Shoulders down! Sammy retains! The premier story of the Triple H era, however, is Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns and how the power of the fans changed the story. Cody vs. Roman had been a hit the year prior. It's not because I think I am somebody. It's because I want to be somebody. Wrestling has more than one royal family. I'm the Cody Rhodes is going to WrestleMania! But The Rock's inclusion in 2024 completely changed the dynamic, as well as the addition of World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, who had been a workhorse for the company, specifically in the last year. So he definitely earned a huge WrestleMania showcase as well. But when it came to the great one, he was on the board of the company when it all came down to it. So the decision was in his hands. Plus TKO wanted him to star in the main event of the first WrestleMania under their ownership. You have an opportunity to bring this business up. You can always finish your story another time. The fan pushback towards the Brummer Bulls' involvement in Rhodes' story didn't just lead to a heel turn for The Rock, it signaled the shift to a more risque, violent story. Have him talk about our family again. Slap his teeth out of his mouth. Whoa. When one good story ends, an even better one begins. Biggest WrestleMania of all time! Biggest tag match of all time! We accept! Rock was already bulletproof, but now as a member of the board, he had even more control to influence the show without PG restrictions. But there was a method to the blood and swearing, since it acted as the seasoning for an already compelling thriller of a storyline. Uh, uh, this is what happens when you fuck with the final boss! The show is over and then it stops. that! There's nothing that the final boss can't say. The finish to the story couldn't have been any sweeter. The entire WrestleMania weekend plus the post-match celebrations from night two was the perfect illustration of the new era. Finally, pro wrestling was cool again. Cody's story wasn't the only one of its kind being told on WWE TV. Drew McIntyre's quest to be world champion dates back to 2020 when he actually won the title, but there was an asterisk next to his title reign since he never held a belt in front of fans. Then after being screwed out of the title at Clash of the Castle, he slowly became someone that was done with it all. Perhaps the final straw was seeing CM Punk return in 2023 to seemingly Move Drew further down the pecking order. McIntyre, future shock! I prayed for this and it happened. 
It set the stage for another epic story that also utilized real life issues, social media, and edgy storytelling. In all fairness, I really don't think I could be objectively fair with these two dip so. <laughs> It resulted in a spectacular WrestleMania that closed one chapter and began another. Oh my God, CM Punk loading oh up that God. brace and assaulting the champion McIntyre. To quote a great man, you never throw rocks at a man with a machine gun. I'm right here, you little bitch. I dream broken dreams. I make them come true, mate. And tomorrow night, I'm gonna make them for you. Oh my God! Oh, best in the world. In that ring, even a commentary, on the microphone, now a referee. Nobody can touch me. He said he prayed for it. And now I'm gonna pray on him. And he's never gonna ever be a champion here as long as I live. That ain't true, lad! Oh. Amongst all these stories and beyond, what we have here is the closest thing we've seen to the Attitude Era. Not when it comes to the product, but in terms of business as well. Business is the biggest metric to show us how wrestling really is cool again. We've already spoken about the sale to TKO, and then our multiple yearly international premium live events, such as the European shows which are accompanied by a live Smackdown and numerous house shows that just like the US events, are packed to the rafters. Fans just can't get enough, as seen from the boisterous crowd reactions, particularly on overseas shows. <laughs> The WWE enjoyed 18 consecutive sellouts in the run-up to WrestleMania 40, which just goes to show how hot the product has been across 2023 and 24. On the show, the commentators would inform us of the company's continued growth. All the while, we got the impression the announcers were loving their work and enjoying the show. Just like the wrestlers, the announcers were given the freedom to perform their craft with far less handcuffs and restrictions. It benefited the stories being told and the overall product as a whole. Pat McAfee was a big star joining the broadcast team in 2021. This meant he could be himself, otherwise he wouldn't have agreed to come in. His infectious energy rubbed off on his partner, Michael Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee here with us at ringside. Corey, I'm not McAfee. I can't get up on the table. I'm too old, but I can still eat here at ringside. It's actually Michael Cole's birthday today. Then in 2022, we'd get to see a call that wasn't overproduced with someone constantly in his ear. Here's the cover to retain the title! Sammy Sane no. kicked out of the one day! Ricochet! Oh, and a cheap shot by Mysterio. What is that? What is that? What is that? You shouldn't even be out here. Roll up! Roll up, Miranda! Roll up! Let's go! Champion! Champion! tonight. Plus, neither announcer had to worry about mentioning band terms anymore. It was easy to tell how much fun Pat and Cole were having. Tables in Philadelphia! Oh, we got picnic tables? Well, hey, Boo Boo, here comes Yogi Bear with the picnic table. <laughs> it's a and day. also, we have on the panel with us tonight the man who the internet wrestling marks used to make headlines. The face and another one is Sokoa. Is that Ken Shamrock? No, it's Solo Sokoa! Eating chair shots! And WWE Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley. With who? A month away from her battle with Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Other improvements include the commentators running down the card to start the show whilst in or by the ring. And McAfee's Bobby Heenan style analysis using a telestrator. Man, you got antler juice all over you. The Vikings lost. And now you're trending as a guy that maybe he's into some weird stuff. No! He said, get in my belly! Mysterio! Caught red-handed! Maybe enjoy it, Liv Morgan. There's lust in your eyes. She is straddling that man. You know what that means? I do, but I don't know if we can talk about it live on Monday Night Raw. But a lot more of gazing on another part of his body. Oh, there's another two. We'll also highlight Samantha Irvine's fantastic ring introductions. She's been given the freedom to provide unique intros for countless wrestlers. This is something previous ring announcers were discouraged from doing by the higher ups. So to see Samantha being allowed shine is a welcome addition to the show. <laughs>
mean, I don't think you said her name right. If Samantha Urban just said her name right, I would like to hear it that way. Chelsea Green! Okay. Well, now touching how the show has visually improved from a production standpoint. Kevin Dunn was WWE's head of TV production for over 20 years. He was also Vince McMahon's right hand man. So once Vince left, it was only a matter of time before Dunn was gone too. Under Dunn, the television product had looked the same for years, and within that time, many of Kevin's production tropes really got under fans' skin. Lynch, on right hand now, Becky Lynch unleashing on the Hall of Famer. Going after Lita, right hand after right hand. He was attacking Omos with the. The regime change was the perfect opportunity to freshen up the show's appearance. The improvements that followed greatly enhanced the viewing experience. It was a complete night and day difference compared to before. Dunn's replacement was ESPN's former vice president of production, Lee Fitting. The improvements were evident immediately, as Fitting gave WWE a more sports-like presentation, doing so by filming wrestlers when they arrive at the arena. Is here, Koala Bear in tow, Kevin Owens looking to win his first chamber match. Tonight, Cody Rhodes makes his WrestleMania decision. Will he finish the story? And there's a storm brewing in the Queen of the Ring tournament as Jay Cargill advanced last week. The transitions to commercials showcase special graphics unique to the wrestler on camera at the time. After returning from break, long continuous shots were utilized. A first round matchup in the King of the Ring tournament. Gunther versus Sheamus, as physical as we expected. This is Friday Night Smackdown on Fox, and we are witnessing one on one action stacked up, Stratton on top. We would see the camera follow the wrestler. And the man has come around to Columbus, and she's come here looking for a fight. One scene would seamlessly blend into the next. Where's the attic, Cole? Come on! Get, get out of here! Well, apparently the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour is underway. The appearance of the ring and stage area benefited from a more stripped back appearance, shifting our complete focus to the action with darker colors lit around the ring as opposed to bright LED screens. Not to mention the excellent use of overhead shots. Now on the announce table, Kobe Kingston in trouble. Good, they're now going to turn it into a Boston Crab. A Boston Crab on the announce table. Ricochet flies! Logan from the top rope through Cody! Look at his eyes. Oh, wait a minute. Interception! The sports like feel we just spoke about can also be seen during the pre and post shows WWE put on during the weekend of premium live events. The kickoff events whet fans' appetite and build excitement for the big show as wrestlers bounce off the crowd, cutting promos in a loose and free environment. Hey, 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 I'm just glad I got to get in Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The post-game shows run like a sports press conference, as the talent who just competed give their thoughts on the event and their performance while taking questions from the media. We are the best. This isn't a promo. I'm not, you know, I didn't look in the mirror in the shower and come up with this stuff. This is as real as it gets. And the man I beat tonight, his dad told me that 10 years ago. Everybody um. acknowledge me. Who did that? Leave. I'm serious. The lady with the glasses, get her out. Get her out or I'm leaving. You, you feel me? Like, for real. Do you feel him, sir? I do. He, appreciate him though, man. It, but man, come. <gasps> <laughs> Nobody told us we were doing the presser. 
So the so the bus is sponsored by Wheatley Vodka. It's sponsored. Triple H is often the highlight of these pressers with the game giving a fascinating insight into his creative process and also fighting off some tough questions. Fightful and PW Insider reported that Drew Gulak was released by WWE. If you're going to cite news sources, pick good ones. That's where I would start. The credible, really, maybe. I feel like I'm on the main event of one of those seven hour pay-per-views where you're just like, please get the thing over with. Don't read into that, Jesus. <laughs> I meant one of ours. I was in main events of stuff that went six, seven hours, dreading having to go out there to a silence, right? Just calm down. Under the leadership of Triple H, WWE is in its renaissance era. Our world here of professional wrestling, uh, it is a new era. It is a new time. It is a new era. At long last, the power is back and professional wrestling is cool again. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our previous installment where we explain why WWE feels so different today. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.